So much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is a Mr. Media Interview, brought to you today by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook at www.audiblepodcast.com slash mrmedia. That's where you'll find more than 75,000 titles to choose from for your iPod or MP3 player. Again, that's audiblepodcast.com slash mrmedia. So where was I before the commercial? Oh, right. Mr. Media is recorded live from the new new media capital of the world and corporate headquarters of the St. Petersburg Times and the Pointer Institute for Media Studies, St. Petersburg, Florida. Well, no matter on what side of the political fence you sit, today is a day you'll no doubt long remember. It's the day a federal health care policy, some would say system, some would say other things, emerged after long debate. Maybe a year's debate in your mind, maybe a hundred years debate in your mind. One day it will likely be remembered as a key accomplishment of President Barack Obama, one way or the other. Now, by sheer luck of timing, my guest today is Cynthia Tucker, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist for the Atlanta Journal Constitution and syndicated columnist. She is a woman who wears her beliefs on her sleeve in her newspaper via syndication in a lot of newspapers and in an online blog. Now, Ms. Tucker is joining us today to promote her appearance in Sarasota, Florida, where she'll be the featured speaker at the next Forum Truth event on Wednesday, March 24th at 7.30 p.m. at Holly Hall, 709 North Pamiami Trail, Sarasota. Tickets are $20 for Forum Truth members, $25 for non-members. For more information on Forum Truth, visit the website www.forumtruth.org or call 941-349-8350. Now, if I had any doubt Ms. Tucker would be comfortable discussing health care, among other political topics of the day, the headline on her blog this morning clinched it, and that was, does the GOP really want to run against health care reform? Now, you can read her column, As I See It, in your local newspaper or online at www.uexpress, that's the letter U, E-X-P-R-E-S-S dot com slash as I see it. Or follow her blog at blogs.ajc.com slash Cynthia, Cynthia dash Tucker. So as far as that headline goes, I've been wondering the same thing for weeks. Cynthia Tucker, welcome to Mr. Media. Thank you so much. Pleasure to have you here. I'm uh, always happy to have another Pulitzer Prize winner come on the show. Thank you, and thanks for promoting my blog. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Um, it was it was an unexpectedly late night at our house last night, bouncing yes. between the cable news networks, uh, the coverage of the House vote on health care reform. I was wondering what was going on in your house last night. Much the same thing. I have a toddler. I put her to bed around 8 o'clock, and I thought, surely by 11 o'clock they'll be done with this, uh, <laughs> but they weren't. Um, so I was up ch- uh, surfing among C-SPAN, MSNBC, a little bit of Fox to see what they were saying, uh, and and CNN. Hmm. Yeah, I know it wasn't the first time that uh, someone in my house wondered, don't these people have lives? Don't they need to get done by 11 (laughs) o'clock? Yes, exactly. Get to bed? Um, What did you think of the result when it was all said and done? I think the result is um, phenomenal. It's an extraordinary accomplishment made more extraordinary by the solid wall of Republican obstructionism that has been put up against it for a solid year. The simple fact of the matter is this isn't as radical a reform as I would have hoped for. Um, I believe in the single-payer system. I didn't really think we'd get a single-payer system this time around, but the Republicans have presented this as single-payer and much, much worse. Fascism, totalitarianism, communism, Armageddon, the end of the world as we know it, and it is nothing of the sort. It is, however, health insurance for 32 million uninsured Americans, and for those who already have insurance, as I do, there are a number of good things in the bill as well. You can no longer be denied coverage if you have to move to another employer because you have a pre-existing condition. 
uh, parents can keep adult children on their own insurance till they're 26 years old. And one of the most wonderful features of the bill, insurance companies can no longer drop you just because you get sick. Mm. At the time when you most need your insurance, many companies scour the contract to try to find a reason to dump you. They call that rescission. So just when you most needed your in, your health insurance, you find you don't have it. They can no longer do that. And I just cannot believe the Republicans want to get out there in October and November and say, okay, we're going to go back to letting health insurance companies dump people when they get sick. <laughs> I, the thing I couldn't figure out for the last couple of weeks I just don't understand the logic of the Republicans who've been coming out and saying, you don't want to vote for this because you're going to get screwed in November at re-election time. And I thought, okay, first of all, what business is of yours to tell your Democratic counterpart that they're going to have trouble? You know, but do you really think that I don't, I just, it boggles my mind that they're going to go out, any of them, uh, even, the, even the Democrats who voted against it, that they're going to go out and say, you shouldn't be elected because you voted for this and we shouldn't have health care that covers 30 million more people. I just I, I don't understand the logic. I forget the party line. I just don't get the logic. Well, here's, here is uh, one of the worst kept secrets in Washington. The reason Republicans were saying that to Democrats, boy, if you vote for this, you're not going to get elected is because Republicans believed the opposite. In last summer, uh, Jim DeMint, senator from uh, from South Carolina, excuse me, said to several of his supporters, we need to stop this health care reform. If we do stop it, it will be Obama's Waterloo. In other words, he was betting if you stop the president from a historic achievement, then he would be a one-termer. Well, the same logic would therefore apply to Democrats. If they fail to get this done, then we'll be, find it much easier to defeat them for re-election because it will do so much for so many people. And never think for a moment that Republicans were against it for principal reasons. Some were. Don't get me wrong. There are some rock-solid fiscal conservatives out there who just believe in free market approaches and did not want to spend a single dime on health care for anybody. Mm-hmm. But most of them just wanted to stop the Democrats in their tracks. And they know the Democrats can be cowardly. So they thought, well, if we say to them, you won't be reelected in November if you vote for this, then they won't vote for it. And guess what? The Republicans nearly won on that because it took a while and a whole lot of wrangling to get the Democrats to actually pass it. Yeah. Now, do you think that since the Democrats were able to pull it together in the end and get enough votes, will they be inspired to think, you know, we can compromise with each other and work out our differences and get some other things done? Or do you think, you think this is going to be the high watermark for this group? <laughs> I wouldn't count on the Democrats getting a whole lot more done in calendar year 2010. This is an election year. Again, Democrats tend to be cowardly anyway. And (laughs) even in um, years without this kind of political polarization, it is difficult to get Congress to commit to anything in an election year. Mm -hmm. So I doubt that you'll see very much more um, action on major legislation this year. There is hope that in 2011, particularly if they don't lose too many seats in November, they will come back and tackle immigration reform and energy legislation. Is there any possibility that – I was going to say when you said that this will probably be the last thing they get done this year, I was about to say that's so sad because it's only March. But, I, I, I mean, I hear what you're saying. On the other hand, is there any chance that a few of them might say, hey, you know what? This is kind of cool, getting something done and making people think we actually do something here. Let's you know, 
screw the election, your politics. Let's actually do something. Uh, let's keep doing things. You've been watching too many Frank Capra movies, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably right. You know, um, we teach our kids in civics classes that people get elected, people run for office and get elected because they want their, their highly principled and they want to get something done. And you know what? It is probably true that most politicians start out that way. I won't speak for local officials around the country because maybe many of them stay committed to their principles. But there is, must be something in the water fountains um, on Capitol Hill Because once they get here, most of them get dedicated more than anything else to keeping their seats. And unfortunately, sometimes you can lose election if you do the right thing. Doing the right thing can be unpopular. I think back to civil rights legislation in the 1960s. Absolutely the right thing to do, but very unpopular in certain places in the country. And so there were certainly Southern politicians who voted for civil rights legislation who lost their seats. Let me say what I think is going to happen in November. Um, The Democrats are going to lose some seats. They're going to lose some seats because that's what always happens in midterm elections. Traditionally, every uh, midterm election and that's uh, for your listeners who are not political junkies like I am, that's an off-year election. That's an election without the big presidential race. In those off-year elections, the party in power almost always loses seats, no matter what. On top of that, I fear the economy will not have fully recovered by November. And there are still many Americans who are very anxious or angry about unemployment, and understandably so, and some are going to punish the party in power for that. And so, again, I think Democrats will lose some seats. Will they lose it over health care reform? No. Will any of them keep their seats because they voted for health care reform? They just might. In fact, that was the argument that President Obama and uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi made um, to whip their wavering caucus into line. You know, that there, there were many people who actually wanted this bill to pass, despite all the loud and angry protests from the Tea Party movement and Glenn Beck and Rush Limbaugh at all. Uh, the Democratic base wanted it, and many independents wanted it. And they would have been absolutely disgusted with the Democrats if they didn't manage to get this done. How can you control um, the executive branch in both houses of Congress and not be able to get a signature piece of legislation passed? So I think many Democrats would have sat on their hands and not gone to the polls in November if the Democrats hadn't gotten this passed. And so, yes, I think they're absolutely in better shape for having done this. Cynthia, how do you parse the credit at the top for this? Does Obama get it? Does Pelosi get it? Does Harry Reid get credit? Is it, was it just a, a, a movement whose time has come, or does it go some other way? Well, Bob, I would like to think it was an, a movement whose time had come, but the last um, 14 months of wrangling convinced me that um, – People could be talked out of that or scared out of that idea. The Republican noise machine did a great job of persuading people that this was a terrible idea, even though during President Obama's election campaign, he campaigned for it, and people said then overwhelmingly that they wanted health care reform. I think the credit um, should be spread around. I give a lot of points to both. Nancy Pelosi, and Harry Reid uh, for, again, getting their wavering caucuses in line. But in the final analysis, I think the history books are going to give President Obama credit for this, and rightly so. Many pundits have been saying for months that President Obama has to get in there and expend some political capital. 
he's the only Democrat with the juice to get this done. And in fact, over the last three or four weeks, he re- went around the country holding speeches, rallies, showing support and showing, shoring up support for health care reform. If the president had not been willing to, and he has delayed a trip to Asia twice. Mm-hmm. If the president hadn't been willing to get in there and campaign again, literally, for this bill, I don't think it would have passed. What do you think the president learned about himself and the process from this that will help him in the next two and a half years and you know, if he, if he gets the opportunity, four more after that? It seems like this was a very telling moment for the way he is going to do business going forward? Well, you know, even those of us who favor the president's policies and like him personally, and I'm speaking certainly for myself here, got impatient with him during the process because I thought he should have jerked it out of the hands of Congress much sooner. Mm. I thought he let Senate Democrats um, tinker and engage in backroom deals for much too long. I also believed that the president had way too much faith in bipartisanship. Mm. And if he does anything differently, that may be it. I believe that when the president campaigned in 2007 and 2008 and said he was going to change the tone in Washington, change the way that business was done, I think he was absolutely sincere. I -hmm. think he believed that he could do that. I think he believed that uh, Americans were hungry for um, a Congress and an administration that worked together to solve big problems. The reality he ran into once he got elected, however, was something very different. We saw a Republican leadership that has been absolutely dedicated to blocking every single thing he does. Mm -hmm. It's not just Jim DeMint. The New York Times had a big article several days ago on Mitch McConnell, senator from Kentucky, who is the uh, excuse me the Senate Minority Leader. It was all about his telling Senate Republicans day after day after day after day, don't you dare vote for a single bill the Democrats want, no matter what. So clearly they were not even thinking about what is in the best interest of the country. They were just thinking about block them, block them, block them. That makes the president look weak. It makes him look bad, and he'll be a one-termer. I don't think Obama saw that coming when he was inaugurated. Now that he has seen that, and I certainly don't expect the Republicans to change in the next couple of years, now that he's seen that, he might waste less time trying to negotiate with Republicans. I certainly hope so. Well. And I wanted to ask you, I mean, was the GOP's party line no vote on health care and pretty much everything else that the administration has, uh, has brought up in the last 15 months, was that really that unusual in party politics when it comes to uh, a president? Or yeah. is it in this case, it, it is unusual. Because I was going to ask you, where, do you think, I, I, I know I'm going to get in trouble for even bringing this up, but is it a racist thumbing of the nose at this particular president? For Republicans in Congress, I don't think so. I don't think that's. I don't think it's about race for senators, for Republican senators or members of Congress. I think that over the last 15 to 20 years, the process has become increasingly polarized. I don't want us to forget what Republicans did to Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton, for heaven's sake the awful partisanship that they encountered. Um, I would never excuse Bill Clinton for his bad behavior with Monica Lewinsky. 
Was it an impeachable offense? I don't think so. But Republican partisanship at that point was out of control. Since then, it has gotten even worse. And I don't want to let Democrats entirely off the hook here. Mm -hmm. I would never suggest that Democrats aren't capable of the same behavior. They are certainly capable of some of it, but they are not well enough organized to keep it up day after day after day in the same fashion that the Republicans do. Mm. Having said that, let me say that out there among the Republican base, there is certainly some racism. I don't think it's true of the office holders, but I think it is certainly true of some of their supporters. You see it in the Tea Party protesters. I'm sorry. If you have the president, if you're holding up a sign with the president's face imposed on a picture of a witch doctor with a bone through his nose, your racism is showing. The whole birther nonsense is just a proxy for racism. Uh, Saturday, as he was walking out of the Capitol, John Lewis, hero of the Civil Rights Movement, was called the N-word. I just had an interview with him about 30 minutes ago. Mm. Call the N-word. I'm sorry. (laughs) There is racism in the ranks of the Tea Party movement. And so, yes, that is animating some of the opposition to President Obama's policy. Uh, there are some questions coming in from the uh, the live chat room that accompanies uh, uh, many of the Mr. Media interviews. I want to ask you a couple of these. The two the two guys that are asking questions. I think you'll you'll see their uh, slant on all this pretty quickly. But in fairness, I asked for questions, so I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna throw a couple of these out. No um, <clears throat> Tony Green asks, "What is the answer for patients of doctors that are dropped from care?" if service fees are not what doctors feel are equitable? Service fees. Is that what you're saying? The word is, the term is service fees? That's, um, yeah, I don't write these questions. I just read them. (laughs) Well, that only applies to Medicare and Medicaid. Mm -hmm. For everyone else, you're going to get your health insurance from private insurers just like you did before. So, uh, So service fees, fees will not be affected. And quite frankly, Medicaid patients are already being affected because states are cutting their Medicaid payments and some doctors are dropping Medicaid patients right now. It happened last month and the month before that, before health care reform passed. So that has nothing to do with health care reform. As for Medicare patients, as far as I know, there are no, there are, there are some cuts to hospitals, but no cuts for doctor's fees as far as I know. There are some cuts to Medicare Advantage, which means that patients may have to pick up, uh, pick up some out-of-pocket costs. But as far as I know, in Medicare, there are no cuts for doctor's fees. Hmm. Well, uh, is this uh, if 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 Obama? T- this, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit here. But if Obama turned out to be a one-term president, mm-hmm. is this is this going to be a good uh, a good thing on his resume, getting health care passed, or is it going to become? And by the end of this four-year period, uh, so, so divisive that maybe it's not such a good thing. Uh, let me put it this way. Uh, people, Alf Landon ran for president in the 1930s um, on a platform of repealing Social Security. It was so p- unpopular among some conservatives, they vowed it would lead the country down the path toward socialism. How do we think of Franklin Roosevelt today for having passed Social Security? Medicare was similarly unpopular. The American Medical Association campaigned against it. They hired 
a former actor named Ronald Reagan to go around making public appearances talking about what a disaster Medicare would be for the country. Today it is overwhelmingly popular and viewed as one of Lyndon Johnson's crowning achievements. Um, Mm. So I believe, in terms of history, Obama's having past health care reform will be seen in the same way. Mm. Oh, we're, we're just about out of time. One more thing I wanted to ask you, though. Is there um, – did, did any new Democratic or, for that matter, Republican stars step up last night? Um, and where, finally, does compromising leave Bart Stupak? <laughs> Let me answer the Bart Stupak question first because I think that's easier. You know, I always thought that Bart Stupak was on one of these quixotic missions Hmm. because he claimed that health care reform was going to change the Hyde Amendment. Quick definition again for listeners who are not political junkies. The Hyde Amendment passed way back, I believe, in the 70s. It said no federal funds shall be used to pay for abortions. It's the law of the land. Nothing in the health care reform bills changes that. But Bart Stupak wanted some very severe language that would have gone beyond the Hyde Amendment. He got President Obama to agree to say, I will sign an executive order saying that no federal funds will be used to pay for abortions. In other words, the status quo remains. Uh, For his trouble, however, Bart Stupak was still called a baby killer yesterday by some protesters. I cannot figure out what sense that makes, perhaps because he voted for the bill, but he is a pro-life Democrat, and uh, he did not get everything he wanted, but he said he wanted no federal funding for abortion. There is no federal funding for abortion. As for new stars arising, I haven't seen, I didn't see any arise through the health care reform process, Mm -hmm. but I think we all ought to keep our eye on Scott Brown, uh, the senator Mm -hmm. from Massachusetts, who was the Republican elected to take the seat that Ted Kennedy had held for so long. Mm -hmm. He did not compromise on health care reform, but he has compromised with the Democrats on other issues, including the jobs bill. I think he's somebody to watch. I, it's funny. I, I, I read the New York Times uh, Sunday Magazine profile of him a couple of weeks ago, and I thought if there was if there was a, another Republican out there who might one day be convinced to jump ship, mm-hmm. that he was the guy. Just yeah. based on uh, you know, you're not going to get. He's not he's not a Democrat through and through, but he doesn't seem like a Republican through and through either. And yeah. and if the Republican Party continues to follow a narrow group far far to the right. I, I would guess that Brown's going to start feeling a little uncomfortable over there. Uh, he doesn't I, seem like he fits that that uh, mold. I think you're right. Well, I'm going to I'm going to end on the part where the where the guest agrees with the host and say, <laughs> <laughs> folks, you can see Cynthia Tucker speak in person in Sarasota, Florida, on Wednesday, March 24th, where she'll be the featured speaker at the next Forum Truth event at 7:30 p.m. at Holly Hall. 709 North Tamiami Trail. Tickets are $20 for Forum Truth members and $25 for non-members. For more information on Forum Truth, you can visit their website, www.forumtruth.org, or call 941-349-8350. You can also read uh, Ms. Tucker's columns in your local newspaper or online at www.uexpress.com slash as I see it. Uh, and her blog is uh, blogs.ajc.com slash Cynthia-Tucker. Uh, and, oh, i got to ask, can people find you on Twitter or Facebook? I didn't see anything about that. I tweet, and I have a Facebook fan page. Excellent. All right. Look for her on Twitter and Facebook. And, Cynthia, it was delightful talking to you. I can't believe my good luck in the timing of this. And thank you so much for being on Mr. Media today. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Take care. And folks, for more interviews with your favorite political commentators, including uh, the Pulitzer Prize winning uh, editor of PolitiFact.com, Bill Adair, uh, surf over to our main website, www.mrmedia.com.
And please take advantage of this great offer for Mr. Media Radio listeners. Go to www.audiblepodcast.com slash mrmedia to get a free audiobook download of your choice for more than 75000 in stock when you sign up today. Again, that's www.audiblepodcast.com slash mrmedia for your free audiobook. And subscribe to Mr. Media on, on iTunes and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. If you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andelman.com. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash andelman or facebook.com slash andelman. Thank you so much for joining us today. Always appreciate when you give up a little piece of your day and come spend it with us. Thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs>